Hey folks, it's Tea Tuesday. It's been two months since my last update. I feel, uh, feel like I missed, missed you folks. <laughs> I think uh, two months might be a little bit too long. Uh, uh, I, feel, I feel rusty. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, um, so the goals <laughs> for uh, today, uh, serial port concentrator demo, I failed at that. I have a bunch of pieces. I'll show you what I've got. Uh, uh, and also Vaughn Joy Manon's Collected Works was supposed to be published. I failed at that as well. Once again, I have pieces. Uh, and I was supposed to have uh, huge fun. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of did that. I mean, it was it was family stuff and a lot of cooking and and, and just general fun. Uh, um, so no foul. Uh, all right. So let's talk about this stuff. Um, so we'll talk about the collected works first. So uh, you know, this is my uh, <laughs> place filler cover at the moment uh, for Andre Man and collected works. Uh, uh, since Vondry Manon is a pseudonym, I figured the thing to do was to make it as absolutely as big as possible. Uh, uh, here is the, uh, I don't know if it's possible to read this. This is the, the contents as of now. It's far from done. Uh, uh, we've got the, uh, and, and, and just to cut to the chase, here is Search Quiet Wake. That's the science fiction story that... I wrote a couple of Nano Remos ago, or, or last Nano Remo, something like that, uh, uh, that I actually sent out to a couple of science fiction magazines and let them turn it down. Uh, um, that's going to be essentially the only substantial new thing in this whole book. Uh, the Path to Best Effort is the paper from 2039, uh, uh, written by Vaughn Joy Manon, and uh, the Living Computation Theory of Everything is the transcript of the video uh, over on the Dave Ackley channel. And this is, in fact, where a ton of time went to. Uh, I was telling myself, you know, I'll just take the transcript, you know, download it from YouTube, to just put in periods, get rid of the uh uhs, and it'll be fine. It'll be ready to go. But as soon as I started going through it, it's like I couldn't do that. It's like, you know, okay, you know, there was a jump here. I, I interrupted myself before finishing the sentence, you know, whatever it was. Um, so I actually needed to go back and, and kind of, if it was going to be readable as an essay, and that was the idea. Uh, um, I had to I had to start working on it. In fact, I'm I'm still working on it. So, and I don't exactly know when I'm going to get back to this stuff. I want to keep pushing it as best I can, but flipping it back and forth between hacking head and English head is uh, a bit uh, uh, disruptive. Uh, um, so we'll see how it goes. The main goal right now, the main goal for December for the next T Tuesday update is get hacking, absolutely get hacking. So in that context, the serial concentrator design. So just to remind us, uh, uh, we are now in the T2 brain challenge. We're 60 days into the T2 brain challenge and really don't have nothing to demonstrate. But the big idea was instead of having the T2 matrix be this isolated universe that ran chemistry and biology all by itself, we were going to admit that we we're just going to pick a chunk of it, a, a finitely scalable chunk of the matrix, and connect it somehow to some external world or simulation of a world. Uh, um, and that was that. that is the plan. And... <clears throat> Uh, the uh, idea of how, how to connect, each T2 tile has a serial port, so the idea was to somehow concentrate all the serial ports down and feed them into a laptop, run a simulation on the laptop that represents the world, and go from there. And last time where we ended was the idea that we could actually use BeagleBone Greens, that's the same system that is inside the T2 tiles already, and each of those, at least in principle, could hold, could, could handle up to six UARTs. Uh, um, and so this was the idea, and after the last update in uh, <coughs> um, October, I started heading for this, and it didn't go so well. Uh, um, you know, so this is 19 tiles. That's one surrounded by six, surrounded by 12. That is a lotus, uh, the basic unit of tiles that we've been uh, assembling. Uh, a single lotus has a single power supply. Uh, uh, and that is what's going to take, uh, at six uh, UARTs per, it was going to take four, uh, not all of four, but three plus, 
uh, Beagle Bone Greens just to fan in those 19 uh, serial ports. And in the process, each of these lines is going to be four wires, a transmit line and a ground, a receive line and a ground. So we are talking like 76 wires that have to go somewhere. And all of that is multiplied by four because we've got four lotuses at the moment on the grid. And I still wanted to make it bigger. Uh, uh, so just to set the physical aspects of this, this is the key master, but it looks like all the tiles. And this right here is the debug header, uh, uh, which can, has the pins for the serial port for the tile. And then the thing to notice is, number one, it plugs in from the front. That was very deliberate, because the purpose of it was to be able to debug in the middle of the array. But that does mean that the obvious idea of taking these, uh, you know, zillion wires and tucking them around into the back so that they won't block the uh, the screens on the tiles and, and mess things up visually uh, um, is a little bit harder to do. So that has to come out this way. It could turn and then head down, but in this picture, if you can see it, the, the gap between the two yellow arrows, that's the clearance between one tile and the next. The blue there is the circuit board of a tile and the circuit board of the next one. There's not a lot of room. You could feed a flexible, a, a flat cable, flat ribbon cable through it. You might be able to feed some wire, but it would be ugly. And then you would have the same problem behind the grid. It was a big mess, a big mess. And I was thinking about all sorts of things. What do I want to do with this? And then finally, a couple of weeks into October, the pin finally dropped for me. Uh, what about doing daisy chain loops through multiple serial ports? And the idea here was this whole thing runs incredibly slow. And that's because the T2 tiles are prototypes. Uh, uh, and I don't do... <laughs> hardware and I don't do anything, but you know, there it is. It, it, they're running. Um, and the, the base rate that we're capturing data is one frame every five seconds. That's when the camera, the Fuji, uh, uh, takes another frame. And so that's going to be the heartbeat of this simulation. And so if we're saying all we need to do is to get sense data from the world out to all the T2 tiles that want to see it, and get back motor commands that want to apply to the world for that one unit. We have five seconds to do it, um, and the, the 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 serial port rate is you know a hundred thousand uh, bits per second uh, basically, or divide by ten. Uh, um, packetize everything, send the packets around with a hop count, and then we could chain through a loop. So instead of having separate wires going to each T2 tile, we have a wire going from one and one to the next and one to the next and then back around. Uh, uh, and this is the picture of it. So uh, we have a USB, a USB to UART, a USB to serial port connector. I've got bunches of those for doing debugging already, but now the idea is the transmit line would go to the receive line of the first T2 tile in the loop. And then if it was if the packet that comes through there was meant for it, it would handle it and send the response out the the uh, transmit line. But if it wasn't for it, it would just retransmit it to the next tile. So the, the transmit of this tile becomes the receive of this one. Transmit receive, transmit receive all the way around until a loop. So each tile can talk to the. Uh, to the center, uh, the world uh, axis, but only by going all the way around the loop. And I did a little bit of arithmetic, and if I didn't screw it up, uh, then it says uh, we could easily have 30 to 40 tiles in a single loop and still get a packet out so that everybody in the loop could see fresh sensory data. And if they wanted to, they could return fresh motor commands uh, and still have enough time to finish the basic heartbeat. So two or three loops with just pairs of wires snaking all around would be enough. So that was pretty good. And I sat down to try to make some prototypes just to scratch them together. I got some uh, board. I uh, cut them up into little bits that could fit by the serial port lines. I got some right angle headers. So the idea is we'll uh, put those onto the board and then the push the header here down onto the pins. And that's how we'll make the connection. 
I took an old serial, uh, an old uh, Ethernet cable, and I cut it open uh, to get the twisted pairs to send the signals along. Uh, uh, and the blue and white arrow, uh, blue and white wire, was the most tightly wound. And and I didn't even actually know this. Did you know this? That you know, in a typical Ethernet cable, there are four pairs of wires, and the pairs are twisted to help resist uh, interference from electromagnetic stuff. But at least in this cable, and I think in general, each pair is twisted a different amount of twists so that they'll avoid resonating against each other. So in fact, the blue and the white is the most tightly wound in this particular cable. I had no idea about that. Uh, uh, and so I build them. I mean, it's re there's no electronics. There's just, you know, take the take the receive wire and send it down to the appropriate pin and the ground wire and take the transmit wire back and so forth. Please don't have a heart attack about my terrible so soldering. And so I made a few of these. So here's an example. This thing is now plugged into the uh, debug port on a tile. Here comes on the green and white. Here comes transmit from upstream. And then on the brown and white, there goes transmit to the downstream. Uh, uh, and there's an example where between both of them all hooked up. I can't show you this working. I didn't get it working. Uh, I got this far and then switched to fiction. Err. Uh, uh, okay, but the other half of it is, okay, so say we can do the serial concentrator, how, what is it going to talk to? What is the world that we're going to uh, live in? And I didn't really know much about this, and so I, I went to the Brain Trust. I went to the T2 Tile Discord, and, uh, well, I'll come back around to that. So the, the idea for all of this is to do the there's a, a famous, a nerd famous book called Vehicles by, by, by Valentino Breitenberg. I've got this is a copy here. Uh, um, that the idea is, and it's a lovely little book. Uh, the introduction: Let the problem of the mind dissolve in your mind. And he goes, you know, so he's a biological cybernetist or something. Um, and he, as he was working on studying the brains of of animals, I felt knots untie, distinctions dissolve, dis difficulties disappear. That I compared to my first naive approach to the problem of the mind. And you know, I feel the same way. I feel like as I've been working on the T two tiles, if I'm working on distributed robust local synchronization, best effort, all of this stuff, uh, and staying close to the physical, spatial computing, spatially mapped, that all of these things that seem perplexing about how the mind is supposed to work, they dissolve into the physical. And that's what the Breitenberg Vehicles book, this book Vehicles, is trying to get at. So it has this very abstract notion of a little car, a little vehicle. So the car is the rectangle that's got two wheels in the back, which are meant to have motors. It's got two sensors up in the front that are meant to sense light. And the uh, idea is, is you can connect the sensors to the motors in a variety of different ways and then get different kinds of behaviors. So, for example, uh, if in, in this one, in A, if we have a bright light uh, on the left sensor, then that makes the left wheel go faster. And if it's a bright light on the right, then the right wheel will go faster. And the net result of this is that a, car, uh, a vehicle on this design will automatically turn away from light because the brighter light causes it to turn away. But if we cross the signals as here, then figure, uh, vehicle B will turn toward the light. So if it's brighter this way, then we uh, drive the opposite wheel and turn towards it. And the point of this is, is that we can think about it in terms of desires, you know, and Breitenberg just goes for it, you know, this, this one is afraid of light, this one loves light, you know, he's, he just goes right ahead and uses mental terms, emotional terms to describe this stuff, even though it's completely simple, trivial. I want to build these, I want to build them starting with the simple things, but then carrying on to more uh, complex and programmable ones. So I went to the Discord. I said, folks, where? how can I get these Breitenberg vehicles? Uh, folks, uh, uh, Tim Teague uh, suggested Pie Bullet, which I looked into. AJP Kim suggested this thing called Mujoko, which I had never heard of. Uh, uh, and uh, after going through it for several days, it seems like Mujoko is the what I'm going to try. So in fact, here it is. Th th this is my little Breitenberg vehicle, or at least it's part of a Breitenberg vehicle. All of this is pieces. None of it is hooked up yet, but 2024. So that is it. Uh, um, 
the uh, uh, so hardware is supposed to serial port concentrators failed at that, but may have got pieces. Software protocol, I did I did implement packet stuff and so on, but I haven't designed actual packets yet. So next time, deploy parallel interface. Well, this is the official schedule, but what I want is a single loop interface, an actual thing that daisy chains through a bunch of tiles, I don't care how many, uh, uh, actually running, and a Breitenberg car with sensors and stuff running in the simulation. They don't have to be connected to each other. We'll see. Uh, uh, it's good to be back. I hope folks are okay. And, you know, happy holidays. It's going to be 2024 before the next update. I'll see you then.